What's up, Dumpers? Welcome back to another episode of Hyper Heroes here on Hyper Rabbit Power Go! Yes. Very excited to be talking about some of the stuff. Uh, it rarely happens that on the day we record, big news is announced. Thank God, because I would have hated to have to wait a whole week to talk about this. Sure. Uh, amazing casting for Suicide Squad. But before we do that, I want to let you know that we are also doing our Titans podcast. Mm -hmm. We recorded that tonight as well. That is now available exclusively on Patreon if you're part of the Hyper Homies tier, mm -hmm. the $5 tier, or any tier above that. You'll have immediate access to that. That's a weekly thing that we just started. It's episode two. Rose, and uh, we're super excited to to continue talking about that show. Yeah, and yeah. on top of that, we had a very special guest on that podcast who's now joining us for this yeah. lovely episode. Matt Acevedo is here. Hello, everyone. Double dipping. You're double nice. dipping. It's great. We haven't had you Love on it. in a long time. I know, it's, man. I, yeah. I think the last time you were a guest on on this show was when we were at the old house. Yeah, that's crazy. Which it's been that long. Are you serious? It's kind of yeah. amazing how quickly we've already been in the studio. It's already been. We're like we're gonna be. It's nine it's and almost, a half months. Yeah, almost a year. Oh, we're yeah. It's gonna that's go really quick, baby. And yeah. it's nuts to me that yeah. we have not asked you to come back. Well, it's good to be back, man. And you know, life's busy and life's crazy yeah. and it's amazing yeah like how many weeks have already gone by yeah and it's like whenever we come back together it's like no time's passed it's I like know. oh it's you know we just jump right back into it it's cool. and we're hoping Absolutely. that if all yeah. this podcast stuff goes really really well you'll be able to hear a lot more of matt yeah and a lot more of our other wonderful yes. friends in the sort of hyper heroes family mm -hmm. that we will frequently call upon in case again week to week we have scheduling stuff come mm -hmm. up and augustine couldn't be on the episode today but he did watch titans so yeah. he'll be back for episode three of the podcast and mm -hmm. the plan is for me adam and augie to tackle titans but Moving forward, potentiality. Mm -hmm. Talking about other TV shows. Matt watches a bunch of TV. We've got a I bunch do. of friends that watch a bunch of great different shows. And yeah. I would love to be able to to say that Hyper Heroes is, is sort of tackling a broader thing than yeah. just what like the three of us can normally yeah. do, while mm -hmm. still kind of maintaining that uh, that that feel and that community and everything. Yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. so thank you again, Matt, for being here. Can't wait My to pleasure. talk to you about this stuff that we're about to get into. <laughs> yes. Um, but the Titans podcast was dope. That was super fun, it man. Was really good. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. It was really, really fun. You gotta glad. give it a listen to see what we talked about. Yeah. So, it, and it, by the way, if you're listening to the podcast version, you know we're on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, all that major stuff. You know, come over to YouTube, check out the video version, or vice versa. If you've only watched the video and you're always wondering, like, oh, I wish this was a podcast. What do they look like? It <laughs> is. Yeah. It is a podcast. It's true. It's on SoundCloud. We put it up every single week, and you know, if we fall behind a little bit, we always put the episodes up no matter what. Mm -hmm. I actually did a poll on Twitter, and I asked people if they like the full episode, if they like little excerpts, or if they want both. Both. It was like a landslide vote. Ninety-six percent or something yep, was like, that. "Just give us the full episode." Oh. I'm like, "Great! It means I don't have yeah. to do any more work." Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. People um, are like, "I yeah. will drive around longer <laughs> before getting to work just to finish out the hour-long episode." <laughs> I've Perfect. done that. I've yeah. done. I've been guilty of doing that. Yeah. 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 No, no guilt, man. No guilt. Another, no guilt. Take another round around <laughs> the, the, the block here. Another Look, drive gonna, around you're going to need to take at least yeah. three more just to find traffic anywhere or parking anywhere in LA. That's true. That's true. That's true, man. But let's get into this huge announcement. There's been a lot of speculation. A lot of teasing happening, a lot of rumors that have been going around as to who is actually going to be in the Suicide Squad. And I feel like with throughout the last like six months, we've gotten little things here and there. Mm -hmm. Some of the people who are returning, some of the trades reporting like, oh, we got news that this actor is going to be in it right. and that actor is going to be in it. Um, but James Gunn officially announced today the entire 24 cast ensemble for Suicide Squad. Yeah. Some returning, some new. Cool. Let's go through them. So some of the ones that I'm happy to see returning. Yes. Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. What? Yeah. Jai Courtney as Boomerang. Yes. Joel Kinnaman as Rick Flagg. Okay. And Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. That's the one I'm most which excited about. Which you have to have. That's you have to have, have, to have Amanda Waller in this movie. I, yeah. I mentioned this earlier today, but the thing that makes me most excited is probably Viola Davis. Yeah. And the returning cast because... However you feel about Suicide Squad, I think that we can all agree it had a stellar cast. It did. It had these, these building blocks of like, and I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, this is really the first sort of True Blue sequel to like one of the movies in the sort of DC films slate since Man of Steel. Yeah. Batman versus Superman wasn't quite a Man of Steel 2. It was no. like something new. It was new. the second yeah. part of the DC And Justice movies. League was sort of like a part three and also kind of something new. Mm -hmm. um, so everything up to this point has been Suicide Squad, Aquaman, Wonder <clears throat> Woman, Shazam. They're all kind of been part ones. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this the thing that's most exciting and for me, the thing that is like the most promising about even taking on an endeavor like this and trying to do a shared universe and trying to do a franchise is like bringing in new directors, bringing in new writers, keeping that same cast, moving the story forward. What is the potentiality of the story? And it, 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 it makes me happy because I'm like, I hope that, that, that Warner Brothers and whoever else won't 
ultimately end up abandoning this continuity just because maybe it's not as successful as other things. Meanwhile, like the Joker's coming out and it's standalone and it costs way less and it's getting a lot of critical acclaim. Yeah. And it's probably going to make bank. Mm -hmm. I hope that we get both. I hope that, that Warner Brothers is able to go. We want to do these sort of you know different different standalone movies. We want to do things maybe like the Robert Pattinson Batman, the mm -hmm. Matt Reeves Batman will be really not concerned with any continuity mm -hmm. while still being like, but we've got this other thing. We have Gal Gadot. We have Jason Momoa. Mm -hmm. We have now Zachary Jay Levi. Zachary Levi. Yeah. We have Margot James Robbie. Gunn, Margot Robbie, who yeah. we're going to see sooner than this, yeah, which is really exciting. Yeah. So like, that's the thing that makes me really excited. And I think Viola Davis is Amanda Waller was my favorite she's thing so about Susan. Yeah, she's so solid in good. That. <laughs> but even just like the character itself, yeah. Amanda Wall is one of my favorite character. DC characters and could mean so many different things. I mean, I think very fairly often compared to a Nick Fury. Oh, with totally. Like the type of person who can just pull strings yeah. from behind the scenes is, is always for such better, an, or, for worse, for better yeah. or for worse. It's yeah. just such an interesting character to me when it's like in a big superhero, you know, bombastic universe with larger than life characters to have somebody like Amanda Waller stand up to like a Batman mm -hmm. and have Batman be like, we call her the wall. Like, yeah. I love that <laughs> stuff, She's so you know? great in the animated series. <laughs> yes, Unbelievably absolutely. good. So that's what I'm most excited about. But then of course, all the rest of the cast is like yeah. really great too. It's such a mystery, man, looking at this cast. Like, yeah. I, you know, there's so many names I never thought I would see in like ever in a yeah. Suicide Squad casting list. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, yeah. also going back to like you know some of the returning members, Jai Courtney as Boomerang. I, I'm Highlight. oh yeah, not, not that I, not Absolutely. that I, not that I don't like Jai Courtney. I think right. he's fine, but I think Boomerang. He was really able to just be himself. Yeah, and that really was that translated so incredibly well to the character of Boomerang. And I and I want to see this character potentially show up in like a flash movie totally, with Ezra yeah, Miller. Totally. So I'm excited to see that character back. I like Joel Kinnaman a lot. I think he's also a very strong actor. Mm -hmm. I think as Rick Flagg, I think there was a lot more potential for him to do more stuff. Yeah. He just felt like a very by the book like yeah. soldier. Yeah. I would yeah. like to see a little bit more character and I think with somebody like James Gunn and and the the writing and and the I think also just probably the tone of this movie is going to be different but similar to yeah. the first yeah. Suicide Squad. And there's been a lot of talk of like, well, is it a sequel or is it a reboot? Obviously, when you have returning members, mm -hmm. yes, it is a sequel. At the same time, I think it's, I don't want to say it's like a soft reboot, mm -hmm. but I think Suicide Squad can be very much treated like an anthology series where it can be new oh, characters in every movie. I mean, that's what it yeah. is. That's what it is. That's what yeah. Suicide right Squad is. Yeah, yeah sure. and I think depending on the mission, that's your, your lineup is going to change based on like what mission and scenario is happening in the world. Mm -hmm. But characters like a Amanda Waller and Rick Flagg can sort of be like the through line yes. yeah. that show up from movie to movie. Kind of like That's fun. Gordon and Alfred in the old Batman movies. It's yeah. the same mm -hmm. actor that right. gives you that continuity, but it's always like the, the cast itself is always changing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that excites me. And like yeah. with having Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn back, will she be a bigger character, a smaller character? Who knows? She's going to be a prominent character in Birds of Prey. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about seeing a lot of those returning cast members. And I, I really, really hope that Especially with Jai Courtney, I don't want to see that character die. Yeah. I, I'm calling I it right now. I want to see I those think, characters live. I think Boomerang's going to live to the end of this movie. Yeah. yeah. Because Captain Boomerang and other characters like Deadshot mm -hmm. uh, and now sort of often Harley Quinn yeah. are such staples, staples of the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Oh, it's all the rest of them that, that just yeah. die. Yeah. Staples just, and especially like yeah. I think Harley Quinn for is going to be like a big part of this movie because that's yeah, kind of like totally. the selling point. You know, yeah. it's like yeah. she's like their. Uh, I don't know if they're Iron Man or like they're well, like, she's, you know she's, I mean? like, like, she's become kind of a pillar of the DC movies yeah exactly yeah. and because you have someone like Margot Robbie who's such a strong actor in that role and the way she played it was so beloved even though it is yes. like a very twisted character yeah. yes it, it's gonna be it, it will lend big. itself to future films and, and especially with Birds of Prey like what's the evolution going to be of her as a character mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. abandoning the Joker and all that sort of stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Um, but, so let's talk about this crazy cast that they've that they've assembled this is sick so the other cast this members is David Dasmalkian as mm -hmm. Polka Dot Man which we know has been confirmed John Cena as Peacemaker which still not sure if that is for sure going to be mm. the character that he's going to play uh, Joaquin Cosio Nathan Fillion no clue who he's going to play Green Lantern that's what a lot of people were what? saying. Like, why would we put Green Jordan? Lantern on the what? Suicide Squad? That'd be crazy. He just shows no, up as just cameo. <laughs> just cameo. Just cameo. Oh, just, right? uh, like, this you doesn't see mean the... they're on the squad. No, like, hey, I would be fine if it, he just walked into like a bank with a Ferris jacket, you know, like a yeah. Ferris air jacket. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, "Hey, it's me," and he walks I out. Know. And then great. he walks off. Wow. Uh, Mei Ling Ying, who she actually in, she actually played a character in Wonder Woman. She was one of the warriors on the mascara. Oh, very cool. So people are speculating maybe she's going to play a new god, like a new role, and it'll be a new god. Could this tie maybe into Ava DuVernay's New Gods movie? Did she, did she oh, have, yeah. Did she have a character name in Wonder Woman? Um, Do you know? I 
think she did, but I'm not. I don't remember what it is. Uh, hmm. Flula Borg will be in this movie. Sean Gunn, Juan Diego Boto, Storm Reed, who was in your one of your most Wrinkle beloved movies, Wrinkle in Time. I love it. Love Storm Reed. Good uh, for you. Good Pete for Davidson, you. Taika Waititi, which what? makes me so who. D- who yes. doesn't love Taika Waititi? Yes. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, Alice Braga, Steve Adji is mm-hmm. going to be doing the voice of King Shark, Tanashi Kayesi, uh, Danielle Mel- Melchior as Ratcatcher, Peter Capaldi, Julio Ruiz, Jennifer Holland, Idris Elba, who was originally wow. cast yeah. as Deadshot, and they ended up changing that up. He's going to be playing some sort of a new character, hmm. and then Michael Rooker is going to be in the movie. Classic. Who, like, Peter that's Capaldi. A, that's a classic staple classic of James Gunn. You know, yeah, 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 come on. Jennifer Holland. She mm-hmm. had a, a small role in um, uh, Brightburn. I thought yes. she was good. In yeah, the yeah, opening. yeah, She's yeah. a teacher, just yep. one scene, and I'm like, because I follow James Gunn, and and I follow him on Instagram and stuff. Like I see her all the time because they're together. Yeah, they're together. Yeah, I'm, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's great. I it's nice to see her, and she does a she's a great actor. Yeah, she did yeah. a great little job. And so, look, like yeah. I I love the fact that like James Gunn works with a lot of the same people. same people. Mm-hmm. You know, I agree. Not, that's cool. It's not a big group, but like you know, I love seeing Rooker. I love seeing his brother, and yeah, it's yeah. cool that we brought Taika into this whole thing too. So. And Idris, obviously. Mm-hmm. So it's <laughs> it's funny to hear people say like, mm, "There's a lot of Marvel people in this movie." I'm like, "Yeah, but oh. they're very talented. Come on, they're give actors, me a break. actors, can't yeah. Like yeah, there's no exclusivity." Anything, like, sorry, <clears throat> they're actors. Yeah, there's no exclusivity. If you don't like that, let me tell you, hate, uh, you're going to hate comic book history. Because, um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a, a lot, lot of crossing lot over. Of, <laughs> a lot of writers and artists. Yeah, <laughs> Go, yeah especially you know, right now is a big like flip. You know, oh, totally. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like Bendis over on like uh, yeah, action comics. Yeah, and yeah, Young yeah. Justice I mean, look and, at like, Kirby. The things he did, he created for Marvel on. and DC. Come on, yeah, man. Come yeah. on, come on. So yeah. you know, and what are the we're all in this you. together. Yeah. yeah, I think your yourself was going to be Manchester Black. Oh, do you? Oh, so okay. he'll be able to have his gorgeous accent, his mm-hmm. natural accent. He'll be powerful, but not too po- like pretty powerful character, but still at a level where it's like you could you could be that powered and be on the Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. like God level, not yeah. like Superman level. And he's Black Superman. Yeah, come on, yeah. that's what he, that's what he <laughs> that's says. Thing, so yeah. I feel like you know that's who he could be. I have no idea what Peter Capaldi would be. I I, I love know, Peter dude. Capaldi. Mm-hmm. I think he's a fantastic doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a lot of people's favorite. Oh, dude, he's so good. He's such a great doctor. Um. I don't know what he's going to be. Has he ever been in a superhero movie? I've never seen him. I don't in. think so. Oh, I can't recall I him being so. no. this might be his I think Doctor Who into. might be like the biggest sort of like franchisey type sure. of thing that yeah, he's yeah, done. Yeah, for sure. And Paddington. Oh, oh true. Which is you a know, lovely, lovely series. <laughs> it's a lovely Paddington franchise. Paddington, Paddington is great. Paddington lovely. is such yeah. like unsung, like yeah. underrated it's movie. It's, it's so good. Yeah, man. Um, don't skip it. So, I mean, I think it's I think it's really hard to speculate who all of these all these actors could be playing because... Yeah. It, and it doesn't just, like you were saying, it doesn't have to just necessarily be supervillains in the DC universe. Right. It could be people associated with the squad or with Task Force or X. Just in the movie. Or Amanda yeah. Waller. Or, yeah, mm-hmm. or they're just characters in the movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah like know? Nathan Fillion could play, like, a new character who is a guard at Bell Ref Prison. Exactly. Who we could end up, you know, like, just the same way that, like, Ike Barinholtz played a character. Yeah. yeah. For, you know, yeah. just like, or Scott oh, okay, Eastwood or some yeah, new exactly. character I don't know. And, you know, so, so yeah, I don't want to get too, like, Speculatory with right, who the, right. who the comic book characters are because Suicide Squad has just such a crazy yeah. roster yeah. and different. You know, Manchester Black was on the squad at one point, so that's mm-hmm. the only reason I was like, oh, that's who he could if, play. If but you I have no could, idea. if you could pair up an actor with a character from the <sighs> comics, it doesn't have to be someone specifically from the Suicide Squad roster. Right. Yeah, it could be just someone from the DC universe. Is well, there yeah, one particular now, yeah. actor character yes. combo? Now I do really like the Nathan Fillion as Hal Jordan. I think that's some, first because, of all that's something I've always yeah, wanted, and he's, yeah. he voiced him in the yeah, yeah the oh, Doom series. a lot, yeah, yeah, a lot. I mean, that would be great. People were saying that Taika's going to play his same character from Green Lantern, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Um, Amanda Waller's dead in that timeline. Exactly, <laughs> Angela Thank Bassett. You. Thank you. Sorry, Angela. Um, I don't know, man. Maybe like I don't know who do I love on the Suicide Squad. Pete Davidson. I could see him being like. A, I don't know, like like a Zaz or something. Dude. Yeah, like he's a little. Like, yeah. little like, oh, that's good. You know, actually, like, tattooed psychopath. Yeah, yeah, yeah tattooed. Do we do we have Zaz? Like very beat Davis. Have we had Zaz in the DCEU yet? I no, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Right? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Yeah, I don't yeah. think, I think so. we had. We had him on Gotham. We had yeah. him on uh, in the Batman Dark Knight trilogy. But yeah, I don't think he's been on this yet. So yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and that's I a good think, one. I think I would maybe like Michael Rooker to like voice a character. Yeah, that'd be know. sweet. I don't know. Some like big CG monster. Yeah, thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Maybe Clayface. I don't oh, know. Oh, dude, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Dude, that would be that'd sick. Be yeah. but, but I also feel like then if you do that, you lose the the aspect of Clayface, where like he's a good actor. True. Yeah. It could, you know, it could be a a, a person, a character, yeah. could pl- an actor could play, and there could be like a, di- a lot of different types. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Michael Rooker is just Michael Rooker. That's he's, it. Yeah. You yeah. just gotta let him be Michael
<laughs> oh my god! It's gonna. I can gonna change be... my body parts. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. I can make my. I can make my hand a sword. <laughs> the one thing that I do love that that James Gunn when he tweeted this out, he said, "Don't get too attached." Thank you. Yeah. Don't get too Thank attached. You. Yeah. Which you know, I mean, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me if in within thirty minutes of this movie, mm-hmm. four people yeah. out of that <laughs> cast are dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, no. we saw it happen in the first Suicide Squad. Unfortunately, I know. Know. Hell Slipknot Jordan, no. was gone I know, man. real quick. But yeah. I have full faith that like James Gunn will be able to treat characters with enough oh, love and care I think that so. like, yeah, 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 we'll yeah. love them. And then when they die, we'll we'll be sad, but we'll be like, ah, oh, they were great. They're villains. As opposed to like, yeah. as opposed to like, that was like two seconds yeah. of screen time. And yeah. then you feel bad for the actor. Well, especially right, when Adam right. Beach was in all the trailers oh. and you're like, well, he's not even he's in, in this the Comic Con panel. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> this is going to be a fun movie, man. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be great. It's I'm be really excited about it, and it starts filming later this month in Atlanta, Georgia, and then they're going to move over to Panama. So I, Panama. As, as excited as I am about the cast, some people point out like, man, I hope we really do get a photo soon, mm. which I would like that. Mm. Though I will say, I wasn't mm. crazy about the reveal of the Suicide <laughs> Squad in 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. That very much felt like something. Well, we have to do it because we're going to be filming outdoors. Everyone's going to see us. Yeah. Right. And instead of there being shitty phone photos, like let's get a production still. Yeah. But I would like to see something that's a little more stylized and gives us a little bit more flavor of what the movie's going to be because I thought that still compared to what we got in the movie. And granted, that movie went through so many things. Uh, It was such a difference between day one and then release date. Mm -hmm. This, I feel like, because James Gunn is so specific with the look and the feel of his movies, the first still of all the characters, I think, is going to have to really represent of like, oh, this is what we should expect when this movie comes out in August of next year, or 2021, Mm -hmm. I guess. That's so far. That's a long time. That's crazy. So It'll be crazy. here before we know it. It will be. It yeah. will be before we know it. Thanks, it's actor. Be it's going to be dope. <laughs> yeah. Don't it worry. We, we got up all of Disney Plus to watch until then. No, oh, no. my gosh. Don't we worry. Do. Yeah, Speaking we do. of Disney Plus, Ooh. damn the Netherlands. <laughs> damn them. So apparently the Netherlands got this like two-month exclusive preview of everything coming to Disney Plus, and it's a huge lineup. It's like over mm-hmm. 46 different Marvel properties cool. and spanning from animation to live action. And I put out a tweet. I think it was yesterday or the day before, and I said, like, hey, don't get too excited because n- not all this stuff might be available in your territory point, at good launch. Point, good point. Because I think that when they talked about what was coming to Disney Plus in terms of the MCU, it's not that many movies. It's going to be a while before all of them show up. Whereas in the Netherlands, they have all three Iron Man movies, all three Captain America movies, right. Black Panther, Guardians 1 and 2, Ant-Man 1 and 2, Thor, all three Thor movies, Doctor Strange, Black Panther, mm-hmm. uh, all the Avengers movies up to Infinity War. They don't have Endgame on there yet. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think here, I think it's debuting with like, I think it's the first three Iron Man movies, Captain Marvel will be on there, and then like a few movies throughout. It doesn't have everything. Uh, so, and a lot of people got excited about all the animated stuff. There's like, the X Men series from the '90s, mm-hmm. Spider Man, a bunch of stuff from like the pre like pre '90s. That's great. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of really really cool content on here. But I like I just want to warn people in the states sure. and in other territories mm-hmm. like n- not all of this stuff might be available where you are at launch. So yeah. I I would hate for people to see this and get super super excited. Yeah. That's a good point. And then when it launches, they're like, what the hell? I this like thing X-Men. from two months ago yeah. had up all the stuff on yeah. here. Yeah, this is great, but it's already me as a completionist. What am I gonna say? This is already yeah. bugging me. Why? What are we missing? What are we missing? In terms of... I mean... In terms of uh, animated? No. In terms of the movies. Oh, 3D? MCU. No, when that, <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> 3D, but yeah. the, first I mean, thing I, the first thing I went to was yeah. when it said movies, colon, I started going through sure. the, the, chrono, the, like the chronological release of the oh, MCU. Oh, uh, Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk. Oh, yeah. And then I was right, like, oh, right, yeah. Right, right. And none of the Spider-Mans are there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So already I'm like, see, now here's yeah. the thing about I don't like physical media. I like all my stuff streaming. Yeah. I'm definitely getting Disney Plus because it's going to have all of it. Eh, wrong. It's not going to have all no. of it. Yeah. You know? And again, stuff this, is owned by this, other studios. this is yeah. Netherlands, but it's like, oh, it seems likely it's owned by other studios. Mm-hmm. We're not going to have the Incredible Hulk. On. Now, again, you're probably watching, like, I don't care. Uh, okay, that's fine. But that's I'm a fine. completionist. But like yeah. From, yeah, like for us, MCU it's like, no, I want to see that. If I want to see the Marvel Cinematic Universe on Disney Plus, yeah. I want the whole if, thing. Thank you. If you were banking on this thing to be like, well, now this is going to be my collection. I save space. I save money. Mm-hmm. I buy this thing, and all the MCU will be on there. I'll and be I, like, oop. no, no, no. That's only going to work. <laughs> that's only gonna work for oh. like Disney animated movies for sure. Yeah. 
sure. That's and, awesome. and, you know what I mean? And like listen, you can and do that. And even then, and even then, you'll get the thing. And again, if you're a completionist, and there'll probably be people. I'm sure most people on Earth do not care. But like, yeah. you'll log into the thing, and you'll be like, "Well, wait, where's the where's the Three Caballeros movie from 1945 or whatever? Like during the war years of the di- oh, there's a bunch of stuff missing. Where's where's this? Where's that? Where's Peter and the Wolf? Where's all this other? You know, there's all this other stuff. Yeah. Uh, where's Fantasia 2000? Where's you know? There's gonna be things. It's like not high on a priority list. They'll probably have your Lion Kings and your Aladdins and your Snow White, but like the, you know, it's like they might not have Black Cauldron. They might not have Oliver mm-hmm. and Company. They might not have. There'll be stuff on there that that. Uh, all I'm saying is this th- this service looks fantastic. I'm absolutely I already got it. Same. I got it. I'm in it for <laughs> right, three years. We're committed for three We're years. We're doing it, yeah. but. I, I hope that uh, that um, with this, like, first of all, people can't complain that they don't have everything. Right. Because it's you're exactly only, like what we're talking about. Yeah. And it's a thing of like. And we're paying you, it so few a month. It's yes, only like seven if, bucks. If you wanted there to be a place where there were MC, every MCU movie, you should have been buying the Blu-rays since they've been coming out in yeah. 2000. Yeah. That's all For I'm saying. For the last saying. 13 like, years or 12 like years. you had plenty of time to catch up on all that stuff. So for me, it's cool that they're all going to be there. But like, I got my Blu-rays. I got my movies. I'm set. And I even have as many of the TV, the MCU TV shows, live action that Mm, they released on Blu-ray. But it is cool that they have the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And in terms of old cartoon shows, that's absolutely very cool. But I saw another thing. Somebody online was saying, I really hope that Disney Plus puts the X-Men animated series and maybe some other ones in like production order. Because not even right, the, oh, that'd be sweet. Because because not even the DVDs yeah. they said yeah. went to the trouble of putting them like in the or in the right order instead of like whenever it was aired or whatever. Yeah, because some episodes yeah. like were not done in time, so yes. they had right. to put other stuff. So yeah. like they're supposed like so I really hope they're for that as well. Yeah, I know a thing I was asking for months ago was like put Buzz Lightyear of Star Command on there, the cartoon show. Cartoon show is great. I really liked it. I went and actually recently finished watching all of it, and I watched it in the correct order. Yeah. Mm. And you can do the same thing with Star Wars Rebels. Clone Wars. Or Clone Wars, yeah. is, what I was, is what I was going to say. Yeah. And, and I'm like, it would be cool if there were two options. If like you click on Clone Wars, and it's like, cool, do you want to watch this? Chronological? Chrono- yeah. Like in timeline yeah. order, or the way that it aired? And you can just be like, oh, the way that it aired. There you go. Or timeline order. That's cool. And then it would be like a cool new way for yeah. people to see maybe a show that they had seen before. So like, yeah. again, X- X-Men the Animated Series, I know they're never going to do this, because it, they probably won't do this with the MCU, mm-hmm. but it would be so dope to be like, I'm doing the MCU from the beginning to end, and then you get to Iron Man three, and then the next thing in your queue is like Agents of Shield episode one. You're right. like, oh, oh, let's do it. That would be amazing. And then you watch Agents of Shield. That would be so. And sick. then every time it's like, boop, Thor two time. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm gonna watch Thor two. Cool. And yeah. you keep watching. You're like, boop, Winter Soldier. Oh, cool. And that would be yeah. dope. But that you know, there's I, potential. But yeah, man, that's like, I think we're. A, wa- a ways away from that, but that a ways away. Okay. I think we're a ways away from that, but I think that's such a good idea. Who do we know yeah. that works at Disney? <laughs> Who do we know, Matt? <laughs> Who? We got to get <laughs> the message out there <laughs> to them and let them know. And again, I ain't mad at him for not having everything. That's not what I'm asking for. But what I'm saying is to build that community, it would be cool to have little options like that. It'd be pretty dope. It was pretty so dope. funny when I was Who? putting the, when I was put, when I was putting this together. I was like, I don't know how. I don't. I don't want to throw Matt under the bus yeah. here. Uh, how much can Matt say about all There's this? There's a stuff? lot I can't say. Yeah. I cannot say, but. All of this to say, I'm very excited. Mm-hmm. But again, like you were saying, Adam, don't get mad if stuff doesn't show up. Yeah. If and when yeah. it launches in your area, and if you are the type of person that's like, "Oh, I wanted everything," should have bought it. Oh, yeah. And physical media wins again. And like you know, <laughs> I, I think that I guess I'm not gonna say anything. <laughs> I'm close to move on. All right. <laughs> well, the thing that hey I, man, you did a great job. You did a great, <laughs> great, <laughs> great job. Thanks, oh, man. Spilled, Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I spilled man. it. I'm sorry. The, the thing that, that I will say, I don't work for Disney, but I did go to D23, and one of the things that they that they did say was when things end Lucas, up on. Lucas, can you hand me a paper towel? Yeah, I got you. Dude. All right, thank you so much. Man. Sorry, <laughs> man. I'm sorry. Uh oh. Paper towel. Don't waste a, t- uh, a regular towel. Don't waste uh. paper towel. That's smart. That's good for the environment. Just let me grab. I'll wash that. Let me take that home. <laughs> I'll wash it. At least you can wipe your butt with it, and then you know, wash and re. You know. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, when I was what? at D twenty three, they did say that once stuff does show up on Disney Plus, it will permanently stay there. There's no, yeah. there's no rotating content. So I think, yeah, stuff might not be there. N- not everything will be there day one. But I think a year after that, you're going to see how much stuff, new and old, will get put on Disney Plus. And I'm fine but with that. I am a little sad though the fact that. that like. Yeah, Incredible Hulk and Spider-Man movies won't be on there. And it's like, you know, Bummer. again, there'll be people who are like, oh, good, I don't care. I don't like those Spider-Man. All right, fine, shut up. All right. <laughs> and then, then I'm not talking about you. I'm yeah. talking about the person who does care about that, like, yeah. that completionist 
that yeah. type of yeah. thing. And that goes for all the other. That goes for Star Wars. It goes yeah. for Disney mm-hmm. stuff. That goes for. I hope to. I hope someday that like the theatrical cuts will get on there of Star for sure. Wars. Oh, that'd be that'd be. There's awesome. something really yeah. interesting yeah. on there that someone posted a screen cap. It, and it, when you go to Star Wars, it has stuff like broken down based on like if it's live action or animated cool. or whatever, whatever. And then it says the Darth Vader collection. It has like Rogue One episodes four, five, and six. Ooh, and then I think oh, it, okay. I think it has like Rebels on there. I'm like, yeah. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna we're making interesting collection and playlists yeah, now. Yeah, okay. I'm into that. Right. A little right. experimental That's with fine. our watching. Yeah, you know, no, right. That's binging. Fine. Yeah. But Matt, you, you know, what? if you could uh, if you could you know throw some influence around there and be like, hey, if you guys could do stuff in the chronological order from beginning to end, that'd be dope. Yeah, I will whisper through the cracks and. <laughs> Ooh. Agents of Shield. Cool. Speaking of Disney Plus, some exciting casting. If it happens, they didn't confirm that this is happening, but they did say that there is an offer out on the table for Haley Steinfeld to play Kate Bishop in the Hawkeye this series for Disney Plus. Amazing casting if this goes through. I think like uh, that was my pitch for Kate Bishop. Uh, I think. Oh really? Yeah. I I thought like after I saw her in Transformers, I was like. Dude, she would be great. Uh, she she looks one. She looks just like Kate Bishop. Yes. And two, she's a great actress. Yes. Uh, and I think she would do like have so much fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she would do well alongside Jeremy Renner. Mm-hmm. You know. I agree. Yeah. I it was really cool to see this news drop because I did not see like a lick of negativity. I saw so no. many people of different ages because she has such a sort of a broad fan yeah. base. There's yeah. fans of hers that are like, I loved her in True Grit. Mm-hmm. I love seeing her as this very serious actor. And then there are mm-hmm. fans that are like, I saw her in Bumblebee and she was dope. And then she's got like the singing fan, yeah. like the oh, like, yeah. young, young fans and young kids. But I feel like across the board, everyone was like, all right, that's a great choice. That's she's a really such a, like, I mean, like she's, an, she's such a West Coast Avenger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much all we can say about that. Like, I know. It, like, I also hope that it does go through. Same. Yeah, I think it will be great casting. And the really exciting thing is that the way things are panning out, maybe we could get a Young Avengers movie. Yeah. That's what, that would be yeah. so and sick. these actors that are playing these characters, yeah. and some of the ones maybe we've already met, could still like could join that and be up on mm-hmm. the big screen. So, oh, I mean, be I would love that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, who what would be your startup starting lineup for Young Avengers? Well, you got to have Kate Bishop. Yep. I would love now that we have the scrolls, a Hulkling. Yeah, that'd be sick. You know, and I would love depending on how WandaVision pans out, depending mm. on how the multiverse oh, of madness, Doctor yep. Strange, Wanda and Vision's sons, yep. uh Speed and Wiccan. Mm-hmm. Like those would be great. And Wiccan course, was a huge part of Young Avengers, man. Yes. Like that, that run, yes. uh, was that 2007 or something or 2000 yes. something? Stature would be amazing from yep. uh Cassie Lang, like mm-hmm. from the Ant-Man movies yeah. or, or mm-hmm. from Endgame, I should say. Yeah. We've yeah. seen her, she's cast, let's bring her back. And then I'll probably go just to make it that old school uh like original lineup, I would go Patriot. Because with Patriot, you could do a storyline that actually reveals, and you could go back to some of the 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 visual storytelling, some of the sets, some of the actors of the Captain America First Avenger era, and go, hey, before Steve Rogers, they experimented on black men, they yep. experimented on black soldiers, and that's how we got uh, Eli Bradley, and then his grandson, who is, um, I think his name is also Eli. Uh, uh, maybe it's Isaiah Bradley is the grandfather. It's Isaiah Bradley is the original. Uh, black man who gets experimented on but then like lives and becomes a proto Captain America the first Captain America and do something I mean this is something that could be explored in a Disney Plus show yeah, it's yeah. something that could be explored in a movie as like a subplot if it's an ensemble movie like it's something that the MCU could go into and be like look we all love Stanley Tucci we all loved that first Captain America movie and Howard Stark and everything here's what the government did and he, you know what I mean and it's like based in some truths yeah. but it's also like the Marvel version of it and Steve never knew, and now characters are learning about it. But then here's this new character, Patriot, and it could be a part of a of a of a Young Avengers like mm-hmm. that. That would be cool. That would to, be sick. I don't I don't think that the MCU is something that should shy away from that. Look mm-hmm. at the type of topics they tackled in Black Panther briefly. Yeah. You know, they touched on 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 things like systemic racism and and sort of world history and stuff in a way that strengthened the story. Yeah. So if it serves the story, you know, go for Commit. it. Come in. Commit. Young Double Avengers is that. dope. If y'all haven't read Young Avengers, the comic book, go back, find yeah. the first volume. Yeah. It was from the writer of the OC. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right. As a high schooler, and then I read it, and I was like, this is fantastic. I love it. <laughs> California. <laughs> California. <laughs> here we come. And they're like, wow, that's actually pretty good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but good I, I think the casting is, I think it's a great choice if it does go through. Uh, she's a fantastic actor, and everything that, from True Grit, everything that she's made in the last, like, Nine, ten years. Yeah. She's been really, really great. Yeah. And, 
And Bumblebee is just an awesome movie. First and, of all, that, second like, of all, like, that, she's like, awesome. Well, I, I was surprised. Yes. I was yeah. very happy with that movie. Yeah, and the fact that this character could spin off into, or I guess she would technically take over the Hawkeye series eventually. Yeah, and yeah, then but, spin off into the movies is but awesome. Her, but her and Clint are like partners first, yes. the yes. mentor mentee, and exactly. that's great too. Like, yeah, it's a lot so, of fun. They're so funny. They're it's a great so dynamic. Fun. Yeah, Kate Bishop, man. Great Yeah, character. super exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about this ginormous deal that J.J. Abrams just made with Warner Brothers uh-huh. oh. for $250 million mm-hmm. to develop brand new wow. stuff. Wow. Uh, you talked about this on Collider earlier today. I did. And there was a lot of... Th- there were so many deals that, that J.J. And, and Bad Robot were sort of going through and so many things that were on the table, including Apple, who wanted to acquire them for $500 million dollars. But the reason that J.J. ended up not taking that deal was because they wanted exclusivity over J.J. Abrams. Oh. So everything that he developed, yeah. whatever he wrote, produced, right. directed, everything right. was going to be exclusively for Apple. And the, the the decision, the reason for the decision that they made ended up being, well, Apple didn't seem to really have any intention of going theatrical with mm-hmm. any of their stuff that they're making now. Right. And on top of that, he didn't necessarily want to be pigeonholed to just make things for one streaming service. Mm-hmm. As we know, Bad Robot, they love to tackle things across all genres, all mediums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if they're going to just exclusively produce stuff for one platform, I feel like creatively, that's cutting JJ off from creating so many amazing things. And on top of that, he's already doing stuff at Paramount with Star Trek and Mission Impossible. Mm-hmm. He Disney, may end up Lucas doing Film. more. Yeah, he may end up right. doing more stuff with Star Wars. So, I think this is a good move. I think creatively, this is a great move for J.J. Abrams and and Bad Robot to yeah. go with a company that will probably encourage them to creatively expand their things to so many different platforms. Yeah. Has Bad Robot? You put in here uh, that Bad Robot would develop and produce video games. Yeah, apparently. I don't think there's a Bad Robot video game yet, but I would be Ooh. very interested to see a story-driven game Ooh. that they produce. Yeah. I think that'd be really, really sweet, man. Well, I agree. Especially with Warner Media, because like you know Warner Brothers. Did, put did, out the, did the Lost video game was that Bad Robot? Did they have anything to do with that? I feel like they did. I never played I feel Lost like video the, game. Yeah, it was not good. Yeah. But it was. I remember when that came out for PS3. I think. Oh wow! Wow. They were like, it's set in the continuity of the show. You can watch it. Mm-hmm. We've got the voice actors from the show. They're voicing, and you're playing yeah. an original character running around on the island trying to solve the m- clues, for, trying to solve the mystery. What the, what in the what? More destructive. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything we can help with? Anything we can? <laughs> we have to go Malika back to the shoes. island. <laughs> Best, man. We have to go back. We got to go back. We, gotta, <laughs> we have to go back. Um, Maybe, but I'm like, oh, but that game was bad. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think because but of the st- And then they also did, there was a Star Trek game that also was bad, mm. but I was like, I they got Chris Pine and Zach Qu- Quinto to I remember them. that. Yeah. But it was not, was a not good, good. Game. But it was cool because they showed the Gorn for the first time. Mm. Nice. In the, yeah. the new Kelvin universe, and the yeah. Gorn looked cool. I think th- them partnering up with Warner Brothers Media, like their games are, they did like Shadow of Mordor and stuff like that. Yo. And, like, they, they, do in, uh, they do really good stuff. So well, Listen, mm. elephant in the room. We got to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, is Superman that, flyby? Yeah. Is, by, is Bad Robot, are they going to do DC superhero stuff? I mean, JJ has a very close relationship with Ava DuVernay. Like, they're very close yeah. friends. Mm-hmm. And now you're seeing, now you're starting to see, like, Storm Reid and all these people that, like, all these directors have worked with coming into the DC universe. Yeah, true. I think it's a very big possibility that you're going to see JJ tackling some sort of DC property. Do I, do I think it's going to be Superman? Yeah. Probably not. But I also think that if Warner Brothers is smart... And based on a lot of a lot of the filmmakers that they're bringing in, I'm starting to become very confident in what they're doing with their universe. Mm-hmm. I really do hope, though, that they can get someone like Ava DuVernay and J.J. Abrams and some of the other filmmakers they have working with them now to sit down and say, okay, cool. We have certain movies that are part of a shared universe. Mm-hmm. We have some stuff that's going to be maybe like a DC Black label or some mm-hmm. Elseworlds label. Mm-hmm. Cool. Let's get filmmakers to continue making those movies. At the same time, Let's build this how up. do we make this universe actually really work? And yeah. I feel yeah. like J.J. is someone who did it with Mission Impossible. He did it with Star Wars and Star Trek. Yep. He's someone who can come in and, and kind of look at the bigger picture and say, great, there's potential here. Yes. Let's get these filmmakers together, and, and I think that we can and really actually create I like that he takes good. on, like, he just take, he, and he keeps taking on like more and more. I like that yeah. he doesn't, like, commit to just one thing. He's yeah. like, and well, he I've done this. Let's try yeah. this now. You know, I think that's super, mm-hmm. super cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking forward to see more cool Bad Robot original stuff. Yes. Me too. Because they did, they did That's that, how did, Matt Reeves got started. Yeah, didn't they do that, uh, that Cloverfield. zombie, uh, well, Cloverfield for sure, which the first two are so good. Uh, yeah, man. But didn't they do that zombie World War II movie? Yes, I forget what, the, what it was called. But, like, yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. I didn't watch that 
that one. Overlord. Did, Overlord. Did that come I out? I heard it was yeah, good. Yeah, it I, like, I yeah. feel like I, I saw a commercial for that. I never got a chance yeah. to see it. It's got, what's his name? Kurt Russell's son in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wyatt that looks great. Wyatt. Yeah. 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 We should watch cool. it this Halloween. Yeah, we should. We should. We should. Yeah. Yeah. Little spooks. Uh, oh, I will good. say, though, yeah. Cloverfield 3 was not good. No, it was Or the space one. Is that the third one? Yeah, that's why Netflix was like, we'll take it. Yeah. And they were like, And I, oop. And I, oop. <laughs> but I think that that to me is the most exciting thing is the fact that like yeah J.J. Abrams a, as a filmmaker and creator he's not going to want to not have the opportunity to create stuff for other platforms and I think also like for Bad Robot more TV stuff aside from superheroes which like yeah there's so much to mine from when it comes to the DC sort of mythology mm-hmm. but Warner Brothers itself it has such a rich history of oh, movies yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that you know, he could find stuff that he thinks he could reboot and make better or stuff that hasn't been touched in 50 plus years that could be better. Stuff that he could add to. Yeah, Yeah. or brand new stuff. New stuff that could become a new part of like a Warner Brothers because I I have brand loyalty to Warner Brothers. I love the Looney Tunes. I love Lord of the Rings films. I love Mm -hmm. Harry Potter. I love so many movies that have come out of that studio over its incredible history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Even if I don't get excited about stuff like A Star is Born. It's like that's still a, a huge part of that studio. Um, yeah, so stuff like that would be dope, man. Yeah, I, I, I like, man. If if JJ Abrams, Bad Robot, where the people would be like, okay, here now here's the new take on Looney Tunes. We're finally doing the new Looney Tunes thing. I'd be like, yes, hit me up if you want a good Scooby Doo movie, y'all. I got the idea for it. Let's do Scooby Doo. Let's do more Hanna Barbera stuff. But, I think they are doing Scooby Doo. I know, but they like hit, photos leaked, right? Yeah. Like, uh, what? It was live action. It was like CG. It was like a there was uh, there was a photo leaks of like the CG. Mm. <sighs> the figures of like Scooby and the gang that's fine Hector's that's already fine. Hector's that's already fine. dying inside that's the one that bit. had like Ed Helms and a bunch of other like celebrity stuff yeah. casting be- that's fine but <laughs> if you want the live action movie and then I'll, I'll, again just to sum up J.J. Abrams for me what the stuff that he imbues his projects with are like heart yeah. If, yes, if there's heart sure. that's needed Super 8 is just an open heart I love oh, the I heart love that in movie, Super 8 dude. I love the heart in Star Trek I love the heart in Force Awakens yeah. um, even in Mission Impossible 3 is has way more heart than like the first two Mission Impossibles yeah. and then it kind of carries through so like yeah even if we learn in the coming weeks months whatever like they're like yeah Bad Robot they're doing Superman J.J. Abrams is gonna write direct Superman I'm <sighs> like yeah heart I'm for that it will yeah. have heart I am for that. And then the J.J. Abrams of today is a very different J.J. Abrams yeah. than when he was developing Alien Superman back in the... Mission yeah, Impossible right. 3 yeah. was the first feature film he yeah. directed in 2006. That's insane. 13 slick. years ago. That's a slick pick. And yeah. then three years later, he did Star Trek, which like yep. was pretty damn good. Very damn good. And yeah. now, 10 years later, like J.J. Abrams has positioned himself in a way that makes him one of the most dominating, mm-hmm. not just as a director, but a producer, director, writer, yep. and his whole company. Yep. It's such a dominating part of our industry. Yeah, yeah I want to see somebody like that be given the full potential to create anything that yeah. they potentially want. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I totally agree. All right. JJ, keep going, man. Keep, keep doing it, baby. Keep going, man. Yo, JJ! <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. We're going to close out by watching this trailer for Watchmen. Dope. Yeah, man. I huh? Zach just gave me the Thank look you, of... Huh? Uh, huh? Hey. We can kill time. Yeah, man. It's yeah. fine. Have you seen? I haven't seen this. There's been this okay. New? So here's the weird thing about this Watchmen series from HBO. They've put out a bunch of teasers and like trailers. Yes. Yeah. But every time I see clips of them, they're like 15, 30 seconds long. Yeah. And I've kind of just like waited until there's been a full two and a half minute trailer. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't want to, to like see a bunch of little snippets of stuff. I, right. see I, I totally agree. That, yeah. I'm not reading Doomsday Clock right now because I'm just waiting Ooh. for that to, to finish. To finish. And yeah. they're on, yeah. I think issue 11 out of 12. So I yeah. just saw that they're going to put out the first six in a collection. And I'm kind of like, I kind of want to wait for the full 12. That's what I'm yeah. thinking, too. Like the they're going to do it. I know. So I'm like, man, I'm still going to wait for that full 12. Yeah. Because yeah. they just put out issue 11, I yeah. think. Yeah. Say it was somewhere. So. I can wait. Yeah. I'm good. Patience. Also, uh, whoever has my original Watchmen 12 issue uh, hardcover, I have no idea where that is. So if you, if you have it, bring it back. If you watch our show, bring it back. <laughs> You're just going to get like eight hardcovers mailed to you. <laughs> like, oh, no, I have nice. too many. You can have mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's check out this trailer. Let's Here we go. This. HBO Watchmen. Oh, spooky. Oh. Those are spooks. People who wear masks. I like that. Trauma. Yeah. I like her. She's a good They're actor. Oh, yeah. justice. Because of some injustice they suffer. Oh, that's a trippy mask. That's very cool. Ergo, the mask. It hides the pain. I wear the mask to protect myself. Yep. Right. From the pain. <laughs> <laughs> that look. There was a cavalry involved shooting last night. 
Tulsa, Oklahoma. You gonna give me the speech now? What speech? I should calm down, take a breath, before we're at war again. No. There's a guy in my trunk. Delightful. <laughs> Whoa, put him in the pod. Whoa, what? You know why you're here? Some nun kicked in my door and put me in the trunk of our fucking car. <laughs> that is correct. I want my lawyer. Yeah, we don't have to do that with terrorists. Weird. Whoa, it's trippy. Weird. Yeah. Why would they start this shit up again? Maybe there was something that he didn't want to find. Mm. Oh, he's great. Yeah. Yeah. Nelson, yeah. They had a mission. It's only just begun. He's Ozymandias, right? I, that's why I, I think. think so, yeah. yeah. Cavalry has our names and addresses. Just run and scare. Safe? This and looks great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. Fast and insidious conspiracy. If I told you about it, your head would explode. Just run and scare. What is this? This it's the only way to show you the truth. You need to help start the Seventh Cavalry. From doing what? Trip fuckers are trying to start a war. Hmm. Ah, uh, the Black Freighter. Yeah. Oh, oh whoa! Owl ship. Get things under control here. Full costume. Thanks. <laughs> it looks what the really yeah. effing good. It really does, guys. Man. It looks really good. I'm so October twentieth. That's so intrigued. close. I just rewatched. Are we gonna have to add this to our list oh. of podcasts? Oh, mm. maybe. <laughs> okay. Maybe if we get enough support, yeah. you get enough people that are excited yeah. about it that are probably gonna watch week to week. Yeah. Um, it looks really interesting. It look. I just rewatched the movie, the live action 2009 mm -hmm. Zack Snyder movie. And still things I like about it, but but as the years go on, I am looking at it again with like a the, the the things that I think people love the most are when it is different and not so you know focused on recreating the the panels and the mm -hmm. moments and everything. And this just looks so tantalizing because it is all original. Yeah, it's a sequel. It's the what happens after. And, yeah, yeah. And and what I'm excited about is because again the comic book in the '80s was was commenting on what was happening in comics and that kind of story then. Yeah, I think that the live action movie in 09 was ahead of its time, frankly, where it's like, OK, I don't think it to me, it wasn't commenting enough on like what was happening in movies. Mm -hmm. But this show looks like it's it's so relevant yeah. and it's going to be commenting on what's happening today and what's happening, uh, you know. Yeah, some of the some of the, like the political messages were weird in the film coming out being sort of like coming out in the first year of the Obama administration after the two terms of Bush and kind of what it was saying and kind of who it was siding with. I'm like, this is this feel it just, it wasn't as, as it, it, you know, it could have been maybe clearer, but this show feels like it, it has a strong voice mm -hmm. with its original content and what it's saying while using the Watchmen world to be like, here's what we're saying about the world today, about television today, whatever, whatever. So really, really excited. Yeah, man. It yeah. looks great. Yeah. And I think also, the movie sort of had the challenge of because it is written and it came out in 1985, it's dealing with that time period yes. in 2009. Yes. So it's like, yeah. I feel like that messaging, it's hard to make that clear right. because you're kind of dealing right. with like two different time periods and trying to make it all work in one thing. Yeah. And Whereas I'm, this yeah. can sort of like be modern and say what it has to say about today. Mm -hmm. And because it is original, it doesn't. It's not beholden to anything that came before it. It's so just it can, using it can the Watchmen evolve. universe. It can like use that and yeah. you know break it like topical today and mm -hmm. stuff. And do, do we know who's writing it? Do we know? Who's I know Lindelof, Lindelof is involved. Damon Lindelof, yeah. you know, Sweet. talking about. I'm not Lost, sure if he's. I don't. I don't know if he's in. Is if he's writing every episode or if it's yeah. like a, it's probably a team of writers. Yeah, yes. I would sure. imagine. For but sure. yeah. So, but that's I think a, yeah, I think exciting. it looks really, that's really good. That's exciting because he has talked about at length. And I have been a, a fan of a lot of his work, and mm -hmm. some of his stuff hasn't quite hit with me. Sure. I haven't seen The Leftovers yet. People love The Leftovers. He's talked about the influence that this book and world has had on him so much so that I'm like, you know, we, I want less remakes and reboots, but really, at the end of the day, that's not true. I just want all the same crap that I love. <laughs> the fact that he gets to finally actually play in this playground is yeah. exciting because I'm like, yeah, we've seen the influence in your other work. You finally get a shot. What mm -hmm. would you do with it? 
Yeah. What would you do with the thing that you are sure. obsessed with and love and have so that's much yeah. passion for? Really, that's something that I know, like, I feel like you would be, you would like, want something like that, like an opportunity to, if you were to able to write like the Scooby-Doo thing or something like. Yeah, but well, my Scooby-Doo would just be a straight up origin movie, but it would be so good. Hit me up, bad robot. <laughs> they're not in charge of it. It's Warner Brothers. They're already they already know what they're doing with Scooby Doo. They don't yeah. need me. But um, yeah. but yeah, I I'm I'm really curious in remixing and remixing yeah. Yeah. the yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sure. well, I think that's that to me is the only way I will be excited about something. It's like great. It was kind of the same thing for me. Like I love Halloween. Mm-hmm. David Gordon Green came in and said like we're gonna deal with the trauma of Laurie Strode and what happens forty years after. Cool. That's something new and different. Yeah. It's not like great. oh we're gonna go in and we're gonna explain Thorn and the curse and all. Mm-hmm. I'm like I don't I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that you know they're gonna continue that to me that's the most important thing. What's a filmmaker gonna bring to something that's established mm-hmm. yeah. that is different than what we've seen before? Mm-hmm. I don't want to see the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and this to me is like. We're going to go back to the Watchmen universe. We're not going to try to remake the movie or make the movie into a, a new TV series mm-hmm. or, uh, that's like modern. Mm-hmm. Let's just advance forward and yeah. let's continue in, t- in the world of Watchmen and see where this could have progressed from the comic book slash the movie because the movie is basically the comic book. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Less. yeah. So. yeah. It's yep. looks, looks great. Excited. Very exciting. Uh, Matt, Ooh. thank you so much for being here. Anytime, man. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, thank you man. guys for having me. You're yeah. the best. Oh, uh, what? The best. Thanks, man. You're the best. Uh, let the good Aww. people know where they can find you. Guys, you can find me at the Matt Acevedo. You can also check out our podcast, uh, Ultimate Fictional Character Podcast, on Zeitheist Network. We pull characters uh, from a bucket, from movies, television, commercials, whatever. Uh, we put them against each other, in, uh, uh, and we have a discussion as to what who is a better character? We, but it's more of a celebration of the characters. Like, mm. what makes these characters love it. the best? So I love it. Uh, and we, you know, we go down. We have like a division champion and stuff like that. And check out our other podcast, Hit Points, which is our weekly video game podcast uh, with uh, Emily Rose Jacobson and Naeem Stewart. Why would you point at me? Because uh, you've been on you the know, show before. Emily Rose Jacobson. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, me. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Hit me. Pink yeah. hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do want to check out our Titans podcast that we recorded with Matt as well, yes. check do that it. out. It's a Patreon exclusive. Join the five dollar hyper homie tier or above. And if that thing grows, there is the potentiality. Ooh, Watchmen. Watchmen. Other shows. Mm-hmm. Other shows. Mm-hmm. Hector and I are very excited mm-hmm. about all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, so please support that. It helps not only support Hyper Heroes, but Hyper RPG as a company. Um, and, you know, it, lets, it allows us to do a lot more cool stuff. So thank yeah. you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.